Hello everybody, we're going to talk today about your next painting project. We're going to bring some collage techniques into your painting. And I wanted to show you, give you a little historical context about some of the artists that could influence your uh, image making or uh, you know, thinking about what you might want to bring in in your background of your painting. So I'm starting today by just talking about a one of my favorite artists of all time, Robert Rauschenberg, who worked primarily in the 50s, 60s. Um, that's his most famous work, at least, until he worked up into the 90s when he passed away. But um, he was really innovative in bringing in a lot of different images, collaging them. He used screen print techniques, image transfer techniques. Um, what you're going to do for your project is um, you can certainly bring those techniques in as well. But the primary, primary uh, mode of working is you're going to tear out a newspaper, magazine, photocopies. You're going to use the gesso to paint those into the background of the canvas. Um, and you're going to have a, an effect that's very similar to the image that you're looking here. Really well-known piece by Rauschenberg where uh, he's got all these images, he's kind of bringing them together in this sort of like unique uh, off-grid composition. Again, these are all screen print. Um, and these here you can see it's a combination of probably what looks like maybe some watercolor and image transfer techniques where he's um, probably used acetone or something to transfer the images onto the page. The concept though, is very similar to this for what I want you to do where you have like a real kind of raw um, collage looking background and you're actually then going to take it beyond an image like this and you're going to paint a still life on top of that. Okay, so you're going to pick an object, you're going to pick um, a topic and work the painting on top of that. So you're essentially creating a series of like layers your collage will be your background layer. That's going to be the first thing that you work on. And the painting, the acrylic, will work on top of that. Now, since you're using gesso as your primary um, adhesive for working with the collage, that's going to work really, really well with um, creating a surface that you can paint on. So gesso is the ground for canvas that you work on. If you've bought a canvas that's pre-made and it has a white background on it that you're starting with, that's that's what I'm referring to when I mean uh, gesso. It's like a it's like a priming surface for paintings and drawings for you to work on top of. The other nice thing is um, that gesso will uh, also wash the image out a little bit and you can water the gesso down and control how much of the image that you want to see through the gesso. So if we look around this image here, you can see he's like brought in like a, a eclectic uh, variety of, of uh, he, I think he used newspaper clippings. He would go to the newspaper, newspaper archives and pull in all these images like the bike. It looks like Janis Joplin back there. And there's like a tick on there, all this variety. And I, I encourage you to bring in a variety of images yourself. Don't feel like, the background has to relate or be very literal about um, the way that it relates to the topic that you're painting. So you could have a still life uh, with fruit on a table um, or some sort of like interesting, unique object. And then the background could be just completely unique or different topics, which would be sort of like what you're seeing here with the Rauschenberg technique. I think it, it actually lended interest to have the materials that he brought together not relate in any specific way because then your mind sort of like puts these things together like oh i'm connecting the dots with what why would you have uh, this image of a car up against this like historical painting um and and that can actually work to your advantage um and it's it's actually just a lot of fun to find images and photocopies to bring into your to your piece this is probably a lithograph or some sort of printmaking technique, but the same kind of concept applies to what I'm talking about. Certainly this one as well. 
Again, probably collage, screen print. I mean, he's probably working with a lot of different techniques here, some sort of printmaking. A lot going on, a lot of colors. Um, and have a lot of fun. Just go through newspapers, go through magazines. We've got a bunch of magazines in the art department, I know. And you're welcome to uh, rifle through those and find some stuff that might pop out to you. Um, the another nice thing, one of the reasons I've introduced this technique into class is because it also there's a lot of intimidation with staring at the white canvas, right? That's the hardest thing to get through for an artist, get past making a mark or you know a brush mark on the page or the canvas. Um, but when you're collaging, you're already creating this sense of freedom and limitless possibilities by having all these things down on the page. And, um, and then you don't feel so you know hesitant when you go to do the actual painting on top of the collage. In a sense, the collage has done half the work for you, right? It's a really helps it come alive. And um, let's move ahead here. Oh, this is an early Rauschenberg here where he started out using um, just real collage-y uh, tickets, cloth, fabric, all sorts of things. And he has a lot of really in interesting sculptural stuff that I encourage you to look at as well. Um, this would be on a wood panel that he's done. And um, we're going to be working on wood throughout the semester as well. It's a great surface for a collage. And you can collage on really paper, canvas or wood but wood is my personal favorite because you can get so rough and raw with the materials and it, it has like a stability to the background that canvas doesn't really have okay moving along we're going to talk about the work of Shepard Ferry a little bit the more contemporary artist um, you probably know his work from the obey giant line which has gotten into clothing and skateboard stuff and everything but he started out working with street art and graphic design um, he's a great reference for this project because he brings in sort of that street art mentality into his artwork um, i chose this picture because you can see one of the stencils that he works with um, and those are big canvases behind him and he brings in like painting techniques by hand like you're going to do um, he also uses stencils and he also uses screen printing. I know that Rauschenberg was a big influence on him. I've heard him talk about that in interviews. Um, so anything that you have, it doesn't have to just be um, newspaper clippings or let's say I was talking about uh, photocopy material. Anything like that would work, but you can also use stencils. If you have a screen printing background, you can do that. Um, really anything that gets an image onto the background of the canvas you can do that and he does that he brings a lot of that kind of like real earthy streetwise mentality into his his artwork show the gallery view here he does a lot of portraiture stuff real political sometimes um, but if i could zoom in which i can't you'd be able to see that there's just a lot of collaging and kind of rough hand painterly technique that's in the background of these. I mean, you can kind of tell there a little bit if you're looking at it full screen. Real graphic work. Some of these are uh, images are actually, I think, probably prepared on the computer, maybe like Photoshop before he actually executes the painting. There's a better view right there. But that's sort of like hand washed real uh, washed out layers of painting building depth on top of the work that's going to be something that I think that you could bring to this assignment it just gives it a depth that wouldn't be there otherwise if this was just you know sort of a straightforward um, stencil technique those layers and the kind of the building of the texture would not be as strong, I don't believe. Really like this piece a lot, and it does show the layers of texture that we, or I've been talking about. 
So imagine sort of building a background like that and then doing a still life or a, a simple painting object on top of that. Um, you, you know, that is going to really give a sense of depth, give it sort of an aged technique to it. So this is probably recognizable to you if you know the Obey Giant a brand that Shepard Fairey came up with, um, started with an image of Andre the Giant, the wrestler, and he would just put him up all over the city and sort of create this, what he called like a art, art propaganda campaign. People didn't really know, um, you know, what it was all about. And he sort of built a reputation that way. And he used this technique called wheat pasting, where you mix together wallpaper paste and you water it down or mix glue and then you paste it like graffiti or street art all over the the walls of the city and so that sort of wheat pasting technique has worked its way into his canvases that he creates so you can see i mean you can actually see little newspaper clippings and things like that in uh, in the background there on top of with he creates the stencil collage technique on top of that really like this piece a lot as well has a nice visual pop to it very graphic like I was I was talking about um, not a lot of like gradation in the way he's painted but it just has like a graphic pop to it sort of like you would see in actual propaganda posters I think that's sort of what he's referencing a little bit Okay, so finally, I'll finish up the lecture with just showing a few student works from my class where we've, we've actually used this technique. If you go to the Reinhard Theater, which is near the art building, you will see um, if you walk in the front door and you turn left, if you walk down that hallway, you're going to see these paintings. And what we did was, uh, as a class, we collaborated to make oversized portraits of well-known playwrights. So here we have, of course, William Shakespeare and Oscar Wilde. And we we actually took these old encyclopedias, which are a great resource, by the way, if you want to go to the Goodwill and start collecting old books or old encyclopedias, because they have a lot of pictures in them and the pages are not glossy. And glossy paper works okay for the collage, but I have found over the years that the very best paper to collage with is actually the older stuff. Like it's sort of a newsprint quality. The older stuff doesn't have that um, glossiness, which paint doesn't really adhere to really well. So if you're wanting a little uh, shopping adventure, go to the Goodwill and, and look for some of those those encyclopedias or those old textbooks, old science books, where they have a lot of interesting illustrations in them uh, that work really well. I think we had like for this class, if you go over there and look at them, you can see like Disney images in there. And it was like a set of books from the 60s and 70s where um, there was these old classic Disney illustrations as well as like geography books and things like that. So I do encourage you to go over there and you can actually get up close and see some of these things. Uh, you, you can see there behind the Samuel Beckett, who's a, an Irish uh, playwright, um, some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Where we've got some of the D Disney images in there. And uh, some of the old school textbooks work really well. So we used a spray paint stencil or, or an acrylic collage stencil. So this is a little bit different than what you guys are going to be doing. But the initial technique is the same, where... We uh, built the layers up with the gesso, watered it down, used it like glue, and then collaged it as flat as we could on the canvas. Uh, the flatness is so that when you go to paint, you don't get a lot of ridges and bumps on the canvas, which is will sort of mess up the painting. Or you can, you can always make it work, but it's just a little bit more difficult. So I always tell people to get the the paste as, as thin as you can when you collage those images down. Okay, there's another one. Not you, can't, you don't see a lot of the image in this one. It pretty much got covered up. 
but you can see the uh, it does still give it a texture and uh, it helps kind of give a washy effect on the blue background. So these are essentially stencils that were created. There's a close up on the Shakespeare and you can see some of that material. It looks a lot like the Rauschenberg uh, images that I showed you in the beginning of this talk, as you may note, very big inspiration. Um, I also noticed that the, the torn edges are a little bit uneven. Uh, to me, that works the best. Um, putting down pages where the edges are real sharp and geometric, that doesn't have the same nice natural effect that the uh, tor torn pages does. So I really encourage you to kind of give the ripped edge effect to the background. Again, it has that earthy, torn uh, graffiti wall effect that really helps it kind of give some depth. Okay, this is a playwright named Lorraine Hansberry. And so um, you can also, I should say that you notice with each of these paintings, we picked a color. So we collaged it with gesso, and then we did another layer of just really watered down, solid, out of the tube paint. And so um, you can mix the colors. I mean, there's no really rules to this. You can do whatever you want. But you do want to keep the paint pretty light and bright so that it is visible because the darker the paint the more you're going to be fighting like actually covering the images up a little bit too much and defeating the purpose of of the project there's another view of the hallway um, we have some big canvases so later in the semester we can we can start to work really large so that's it for this little discussion. I hope uh, that it gives you some inspiration. Start collecting some materials. I'll be doing a little demonstration on how to lay those uh, materials down onto the canvas to get you started. All right, good luck, everybody.